morning everybody <laughs> hey Jackie Tracy Maureen Mojin Barb Christy welcome okay so after I stopped yesterday I, d I didn't even come back <laughs> I got busy with other things and then I was, um, I had lunch and I started watching a series on Netflix while I was having lunch and then I just ended up sitting there all day. <laughs> so I didn't get anything done. So um, today I absolutely have to get this done because tomorrow I have to do the Color Pencil Magazine tennis shoes and then on Friday I'm doing the pre-recording with Ellen. Um, on the podcast so um, yes so I need to get this finished and out of the way <laughs> so before I get started actually I want to just give you guys a little reminder of what we did on on the um, student portal page uh, let me just find that. Okay. So if you guys click on login and you log into your student portal. See that, or is that wait? This whole okay. Uh... Okay, I guess the screen size is a bit weird. So if you go into the art chat and forum, so someone suggested that um, we create a new one called um, tips and tricks suggestion videos. So I did that. So if you go here, so the, these are all the categories that we have open at the moment. So we've got, if you have any art problems, you can talk about it here. If you want to talk about art supplies, you can talk about it here. Commissions, uh, creating videos. Uh, if you want to talk about your struggles with free art or how you can sort of talk to people that ask you for free art, how you can um, ask them or t explain to them why it isn't exactly a very fair question to ask for free art. Um, reference photos, if you're guys have cool links and stuff to share with other reference photos um, here I got the hashtag Sheldine student art so if you're on Instagram and you are doing um, any drawing and you're a student of mine so it doesn't have to be one of my tutorials but any drawing you're doing and you are a student of mine use this hashtag and then your um, images will come up I'll show you if you scroll down your images will come up here so I did a couple of mine just as an example. You can see hashtag Sheldine Student Art. So if you add that hashtag to your work, your work will come up there. Um, and then we can also talk about studio equipment and here's the tips and tricks ideas. And then if you guys want to add a new topic for discussion that's not on there, then just type it in here and then I will be able to put that on there. And I want to encourage you guys to use this. So I know that um, we we've been using it but we haven't we've almost like forgotten about it so i've seen it's gotten very quiet so i i really want us to use this probably try and use this more than you use the facebook page if you can so use the facebook student portal page for if you need to share an image and you're asking for help on an image but um if you want to discuss a topic that you think will be a good topic to keep in the discussion then put it in the um our chat and forum instead 
And then if you're new, then come and say hi, introduce yourself, introduce yourself. A couple of you have already. Um, and the ones that have uh, have been students of mine for quite a while, which it's so nice to see these sorts of comments. And also when you put these comments out there and someone new comes into the page, they're gonna feel comfortable really quickly because they can see that it's a pretty nice community that we have here and it's very inviting. So I really want, um, want them to be able to see that as soon as they get in here. And then I think so far all the, the topics are open but none of them have really been used yet and I, I want to talk about it more but I haven't had the chance to really put things on there. But if you have information that's relevant to any of these topics, put it in there. Um, it's, it's just something available for everybody. I did, um, Marie was asking about the um, commissions, like she's super interested in this topic for discussion. And what I've done is I've I put a link to a blog post that I wrote a while ago on pricing your commissions if you're, if you're pretty new to art and you haven't been doing it for too long, um, sort of what you're looking for in price range and how to approach it. To um, And then I did it, I think, like three years in a row to see what the price difference is every year as your work starts improving the more commissions you do. So I put that there, but we can definitely talk about that more. And Ellen and I, once we finish our podcast this Friday, because this Friday's podcast is very relevant to that as well, I'll put the link to that there too, so that information is there. But I really encourage you guys to use it, please, because there's a lot of a lot of useful things that we can discuss. And we put it in the Facebook page, and then it sort of gets lost over time. So it's not something that's there to reference back to very easily. So this is what I want to use this space for, so that it's easy for us to be able to go back there quickly. So if you you don't want to scroll, like you want to use these little tabs because the more we start chatting, the longer it is going to take to scroll to a place. So make sure you use these little shortcut tabs. And then if you want to um, comment on it, it's really easy. Like over here, we've got the, um, the hashtag. So you could just click in there, log into your Facebook profile or use your email if you want. So if you click on that, you'll see that your face will pop up and then you can um, type in a question or a comment about it. Um, and that's what you can do in every single one of them. So if you want to talk about the commissions, click on commissions and um, feel free to go ahead and comment about it like that. Okay, so please use this. I want you guys to use this. And then the other things. So this awesomeness tab, I think I had a discussion with uh, some of the $15 students yesterday. So this is going to disappear. So um, I, you'll still have access to those fantasy art um, drawing tutorials, but I'm not getting time for them, so I'm not able to do it. So the difference is that instead of the fantasy art drawings, you guys are automatically going to be entered into every single giveaway that I do, whether it's on giveaways to the public or giveaways in the monthly challenge or whatever it is you guys are automatically entered into that those giveaways every single time you don't even have to be there so that's what your $15 subscription is going to give you um, compared to the other subscriptions but and then if I do more fantasy art then I'll give you access to those videos as well um, and not everybody else so that'll probably stay there I'll probably change it to fantasy um, fantasy theme or something and then um, $15 subs will still get access to that but don't be surprised if you don't see too many changes in there because I'm not getting to the fantasy art um, okay and then the monthly challenge like I have put the monthly challenge here I actually need to start putting March in here um, and you can start entering your March entries already so we've got February student challenge in there and you can see all the entries for February and then we are able to comment on each entry that gets put in there so what I'll do is if you guys start entering the March challenge now I will already start putting your challenge entries in there and we can start talking about it now already before the end of the month so you guys can comment on it and you guys can sub submit your entries and then uh, we can already start commenting on it now and by the time we do the challenge video um, you might have a little bit of feedback there already that will be pretty useful to you. Um, okay, and then the student portal. It's slowly but surely getting to the point where um, there's 
a lot of the tutorials are there, but not all of them. I'm, I'm struggling to find the time. Um, although I feel bad because yesterday I had a real lazy day. So I could have done a bit yesterday, but I ended up watching Netflix. But we all need those days, right? <laughs> so um, over here, it's real easy. You just pick a topic. Um, so you, if you want to see the artist hangouts, if you want to see with the beginner's course, um, if you click on birds, you can see all the tutorials that we've created for um, that include a bird. So this one's the one we're busy with right now. Um, we've done the peacock feathers, the crow. So you can download the reference and you can watch all the videos right there. So you just have to click on the click on these links right here and it will take you straight there. So that's sort of, you want to really utilize that um, the navigation bar over here. Flowers, if you click on flowers you'll find it there. You can also click on um, materials. So I have put categories with uh, like the etching needle. If I've used anything with the etching needle you'll find it here and underneath each one you'll have a list of materials. So here you can see we used ink etching needle, polychromous pencils and solvents. Um, if you want to see which ones I use sanded paper on, you can click on sanded paper and you can just check the full list of materials straight underneath the image um, if you want to know more about that. And then worksheets and references, they, they are together. It's just a, a Dropbox link. So you just click on the link and it will take you straight to where all the reference downloads are. Um, the same with the worksheets. And that's, that's sort of how it's going to go. And then um, any ebooks, the ebooks you can click on, you can get them here. And you can download the, uh, download the ebook here. Or over here you can see the, um, the tutorial, the video tutorial, you've got the lips here. Um, I'll probably, I'll put the cat eyes back up there. I may as well give you guys all the ebooks. Um, that's alright, as long as you guys don't share it with anybody else, which you know already. So I'm not fussed about that. And then um, as I'm adding these, I am making sure that I put all the dates in. So the actual date that I did that tutorial. And then you can see the, the oldest one I have on there at the moment is April 2016. So we've got the uh, McCall eye. So I still have a fair, <laughs> a fair bit to go because um, we went into yeah beginning 2016. Um, will be the oldest ones but like I there's a couple of ones that I still need to put in here but at least the dates are there so you can if you click on um, February you'll obviously see every, like all the current things that we're busy with right now so the daily announcements which will always be at the top and then um, this is the one we're busy with right now so that was the one we finished last so the dates are all correct so you'd be able to watch, see, watch it in the order of them actually occurring in time and then these shortcut links should be the easiest way for you guys to navigate through the student portal and find everything that you need real quick. So I, I think this is so much better than what I had before. So I'm very very happy with the way it is and I think it's a lot easier. And then having the um, the monthly challenge on its own separate little section and having the art channel forum in its own section as well I think is um, easy, it's so easy we can just hop on there and we can um, use it. So please use it. I think it's pretty easy to use on your on your mobile phone as well. Uh, the only problem is that with the navigation bar, I still haven't figured out how to fix this. And I don't know if I have to change the whole theme because I can't do that. I can't change the whole theme. I've only recently changed the theme and I don't want to change it again. So um, the only problem is that these navigation links are all the way at the bottom. If you're on your phone, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to find all the shortcut links, which is a bit painful. So I might send Weebly an email and just ask them if there's a way to switch it over. Um, but apart from that, please use it. Uh, for those that are close by, I do have work the two workshops coming up. So I've got the Pan Pastel workshop. Um, which is coming up on the 24th of March and I've got the acrylic pouring workshop so this one's gonna be super cool um, I, I actually just spent $1,200 which is so much money but I bought all these acrylic um, pouring paints and 3d objects so we're gonna be doing acrylic pours on rocks on 3d boxes we'll tower the boxes and have the pores sort of flow down and um, what else oh and then I'm gonna seal a glass in the frame 
so that we can do the acrylic pour straight into the frame and then when you look at it through the bottom of the frame you will see the um, pattern of the design so we're going to be doing that um, so that's why that workshop is so expensive for anybody that's close by that's going to be attending these but those are the two that are coming up next um, and then the rest I haven't really I haven't even updated my gallery in a while actually so I'm always focused on the student portal that I'm not actually focusing so much on my other the rest of the oh yeah and if you click on the gallery if you use that hashtag you the, that's the first thing you're going to see is whoever used that hashtag so make sure you use the hashtag Sheldeen student art uh, and you can go ahead and do that now if you want to add that hashtag to some of your drawings and we'll see see it pop up but on the home page oh yeah so the next event is tomorrow I better change that date because that changed but we're going to be doing the tennis shoes okie dokie Radio. So now, let's get back to this, because we have to finish this today. Uh, radio. Okay, I'll be right back. If she barks more, then someone's here. No. Okay, uh, let me see what you guys have just said. Hey Sandy. Sandy says, I couldn't get to the live stream with the chat from the student portal. I had to cut and paste the address into YouTube. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so let me actually show you that right here. window capture so if you go into there and go to student portal and then so you would click onto the YouTube video which should pop up here in a second so this this is what we're busy watching right now and then if you click on YouTube It'll, it will take you to YouTube and then you can see the chat. So here's the chat. So make sure that you click on YouTube when you, um, yeah. So if you just watch it through here, you're not going to see the chat. Okay. So make sure that you click on YouTube if you want to see the chat. Or you can just take the link, copy it and put it straight into YouTube and then you should be able to see the chat yeah so if you're watching this then you sort of you're sort of watching it through the website not through YouTube so that's why the chat doesn't come up so unfortunately that is just the way that we have to do it but at least you figured it out <laughs> Oh, did I put the wrong link underneath? Is that the wrong link? Maybe I didn't update the link from yesterday. Oh no, it's the right link. Okay, great. So I hope that you guys are all sorted now with how to watch it through YouTube. Thanks, Maureen, for helping Sandy out. <laughs> cool. Great, Sandy. I'm glad you, you've got it all sorted. Radio, let's carry on. So I want to finish the blossoms and then... I'll carry on with the bird. 
So, remembering to record. <laughs> DSLR is not staying in the same position. So I just want to clip it. Pressing record on that. Slot it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So carrying on with these cherry blossoms. Using some middle purple pink number 125. Let me zoom in for you guys. There we go. Beautiful. So, middle purple pink number 125. I had so much fun doing these flowers yesterday. <laughs> uh, let me just say on... Um... Hey Barbara! let those on Facebook know that we are live. <clears throat> Actually, is Diane on here? Wait, I think Diane will be on here in a sec. She commented on Facebook not too long ago. Um, when she gets on here, I'll tell you guys a valid point she made.
Okay, this is like a red, a deep red on my face. So I'm going to use some Scarlet Red number 118. Okay, I think I need to put my shadows in first before I get carried away with all the colourful stuff. Hey Jackie! <laughs> hey Luella! Okay, before I get too carried away, I'm going to use my indigo blue. Where do you little blue? My shrinking indigo blue. Okay, shadows. Darkest areas first. gonna make me um, find each sort of blossom petal a bit easier and it's like this So this area here is actually the the Tui bird's claw. This top section here is the top of its leg. Okay, now that we found that. question and this is irrelevant to art but has anyone heard of kinesiology this is a k kinesiology so um i actually because yesterday some of you were on here i was talking about my back and how my shoulder was really hurting 
and then um, I tried to get a booking for a remedial massage, which I ma managed to get today at 4 p.m. But I'm gonna give I gave that one to Vinny because I think Vinny needs it more than I do. So and then I found another place in town, um, and it's actually a friend of mine from the art society. She does kinesiology, and so I booked a session with her. So I'm curious. I'm so curious to see what it's all about. So I know like they focus on energies and like chakra balancing and things like that. So I'm very excited to see what, what that's like and to find out what the truth is behind the pain that I experience. Although I'm sure like my shoulder is because of posture and how I have my arm every day. But I'm curious to see other things. Um, or find out what other things are about. So I can't wait. So that's happening tomorrow afternoon. I'm thinking I should start the color pencil magazine challenge a bit earlier than what I did today. Maureen's heard of it, and Marjean. I'm not surprised that Marjean's heard about it. <laughs> cool. Have, have any of you tried it? Have you ever gone for a session? Barbara says maybe maybe tendonitis. Yeah, I I don't know. It must be something because of because I'm holding my arm in a position that it shouldn't be in for hours in a day. So I'm sure over time that that must like obviously I'm, I'm experiencing pain in my shoulder blade. So it will obviously be doing something to you over time. If that's something I'm going to have to put up with um, for drawing and if I can't stop it um, and if my only way to stop it is to stop drawing then it's not going to happen. <laughs> I'll just put up with it. But it must be... I also am very lazy when it comes to doing proper exercises for it. So I have been given exercises like a good one is you hold your arms out and then you you pull one forward and the other one back so that stretches them out nicely or you do that while you're lying with a rolled up towel down your spine that's what my the remedial massage has told me to do so that's good because it gives your shoulder blades relief so it sort of goes over the the roll of the towel and it feels so nice it does feel so good to lie on a towel rolled up on your spine but I know these exercises, but I don't do them. Don't, I think we all get like that. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes you'll be good for the first week or so, and then you don't do the exercises. And then you go back and you're like, oh, I'm in pain. And then they ask you, have you done the exercise? And I'm like, no. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, cool. Maureen says kinesiology is when the muscles and nerves are manipulated to alleviate pain yeah I'm curious to see because I know that she's also going to be using crystal so crystal energy for healing um, uh, I'm not sure how they do the the um, chakra balancing and yeah I, I don't know how much real physical work there's going to be I don't know I'm going to have to I'll find out tomorrow <laughs> but I'm excited Okay, yeah, Barbara says that 
tendonitis is when you repeat the same movement over and over. Um, she experienced that with hairdressing. So you got that from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teach you the exercises, but do we listen? Let me see if I can find a different playlist, sort of over this one. Oh, really, Marjean? How did, how did she go? Did she like it? Did she feel better? Um, latest tracks, maybe? So the music I um, listen to for those who don't know is through Epidemic Sound, so I'm subscribed to them, and that gives they um, that allows me to use their their music on any of my videos, and their music's really nice. So let's listen to their latest tracks. See what that's like. I just got a message that I really want to reply to. <laughs> This is a bit of a weird one, isn't it?
Okay, I think I can stop for that now. Um, I am going to use some of that beautiful orange that I love so much. So the dark cadmium orange, 115. Oh, my jeans hasn't made a huge difference. You'll ask again. Yeah, thanks. Let me know. Uh, yeah, I think um, luckily it's it's not as extreme as as what some of you have to put up with um, with back pain instead of I think um, what's it called? It's, does it start with an R? so it's a shot that you get in your spine isn't it? to help with the nerve pains and then I know my grandfather gets them and he has to go every six months, he has to get a new shot. But it lasts that long, which is pretty amazing. exaggerating the colors of my flowers more but that's because it's a drawing and I like the brightness of the colors so I'm not fussed about it so it's up to you how far you'd like to go I mean this reference photo is already available to you if you want to use it um, just if you go in the portal click on download reference But I, you're probably waiting for the the proper tutorial before you give it a go. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be giving you guys um, access to it before anyone else. So you'll get it as soon as Pan Pastel gets it, and then Pan Pastel will still have to upload it um, to their channel and stuff. So I'll have an unlisted upload for my students, and you don't have to wait for Pan Pastel. But that I still have to edit it though. <laughs> so hopefully in a week you should have it. Hopefully. See, I'm one of those stubborn people. I don't take any medication or anything like that. I, the only things I'll take is if they're holistic. So um, if I have a headache, I won't even take a headache tablet. <laughs> so, and I feel the same with creams. I won't take any creams with chemicals and stuff in. I'd rather put up with the pain. But that being said, I've never had to deal with extreme pain. I'm sure if the pain gets bad enough, I'll take medication for it. But um, if I can avoid it, I do. But I know sometimes it's it's something you just have to do. But luckily, I'm not in a position to to be in any sort of pain that I can't put up with. I have um, some essential oils mixed up for for to you know help with the muscles and stuff and I have magnesium um, spray and things as well it's just I always forget to ask Vinny to put some on for me 
And then when I remember, he's not home. <laughs> Cortisone, that was the, so it's not an R, it's a C, so yeah, that's the, the name I was looking for, cortisone shots, yes. Oh, in your shoulder and other, yeah, so that's what my grandfather gets, he gets those for his back. funky colors are in here. Let's use some magenta 133. Just in time. Oh, Barbara, that's a good idea. You know, I haven't had a nice soak in a tub for a long time. That's a very good idea. And I have some essential oils to put in there as well. That sounds good. I think I'll have a boss to that. <laughs> Maybe some candles and read a book as well. Good to make time like that for yourself. Because it relaxes your mind and your body, and then when that all relaxes, then everything just gets better. It's like a natural healing process for your body when you alleviate stress. Ooh, Marjean says, my shoulder got to the point I couldn't raise my arms more than a few inches. So I got the shot. Oh, no. Yeah. So I, you guys have made me feel like I will really do these exercises more often now. Because if I don't, I know it's going to get worse the older that I get. So I need to. And it's like, the first thing I do in the morning is I lift my arms above my head. And they, I don't know if you heard that. They click. I was like, I have to alleviate that. I need to push it out and make it, make it, you know, looser. So I really do need to do those stretches. Mm. We always get such good things out of these chats, don't we? <laughs> Sometimes it's just those little reminders to help us just think a little bit more about it and try and be a bit more disciplined in some cases. We all need that. Um, someone pointed out uh, I was in an email so one of my students sent me an email saying that um, she noticed how much I loved using she's a newish student she noticed how much I like using the polychromos pencils and then she was talking about riots having a sale for $219 on the set of polychromos pencils um, but Kogan's prices are even better so if you want to get a set let's go see what they are now 
So Kogan is insane. With their prices. It's amazing how they can. So if you search Faber Castell. Faber Castell. Uh, I got the put pen set from them as well. So 120. Uh, it's not on sale anymore, but that's still a pretty good price. So Kogan's set of polychromos pencils for 120 is 229 dollars and then if i look at like eckersley's which is um go polychromos i won't look at so eckersley's is a big art supplier and their polychromos sets for Far out, that's crazy. So their turn of 120 is $357. That, that's more than $100. $100 more expensive than Kogan. That's ridiculous. So that's Eckersley's. Now, I wonder how much I'd pay. Okay, so I've got a trade account with them. And I think it's still more expensive for me to. So I, that's why I use Kogan. So, um. Polychromos. Search. So from a trade account, so I, it would cost me $248. But if you don't have a trade account with them, so the everyday person will pay, what did I say, 357 Is that what I said? That's crazy. So Kogan is good, so keep an eye out on Kogan. So Kogan, you'll probably get the best price for a set of polychromos pencils. It would be great if they had other pencil brands on here as well. Maybe they will one day. And then their pit pens are great too. I, I have to do another tutorial with the Yupo paper and the pit pens. But um, yeah, so just have a look at that. And then Diane, um, I guess she won't make it today, but what I wanted to stay, say earlier is Diane um, mentioned something. So she was looking up a some of my old tutorials, the one that I did of the giant eye. Um, and that one was, I think, two years back or a year and a bit and she said the fourth part um, YouTube won't give her access to it it says it's not available in a region because of the music that's on there so that is going to happen from time to time because my older videos um, they're not monetized videos so I used any music which um, means that that music isn't necessarily going to be available in every region so some of the videos you guys might not even be able to watch because of that but that's only the older ones so anything within the past year hopefully that shouldn't be the case you should be able to watch it but if you do come across a really old video um, that you can't get access to I'm really sorry I can't actually do anything about that because I edited the videos with the music and unless you want to watch it without any sound um, I won't be able to give you access to that. So that's just something that Diane brought to my attention. So keep that in mind. But um, most of you tend to be using the newer tutorials anyways. That sounds interesting, Majin. Emotion code therapy. Jackie, that's so cool. Imagine that. 
when your right shoulder is too sore, then you're going to train your left hand to draw until you get to a point where you can just draw with both hands. That's that's crazy. You know, that does something to your brain. I, I swear it makes you smarter because, because most creatives, a lot of us um, that... Are, are not very technical or mathematical based so we we will be using the right side of our brains and then you'll find that those that are more technical based mathematical based um or like number based people and creative use more of their left side of the brain um uh, i think maureen you you left-handed are you and then um if if you train yourself to use your left hand you are actually also picking up on l the left part of your brain so you're stimulating that and you start activating other things um to in that part of the brain that you haven't activated before just by using your left hand isn't that crazy <laughs> luella yeah we need to get to that soon <laughs> Okay, I need to stop talking. I am not getting very far today. I need to get this finished. <laughs> I really have those moments, don't I? Some days I just talk, 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 talk. And other days I'm just really quiet and in the moment. I think you guys probably know me more than my actual physical friends do that I hang out with because I spend more time with you than I do with anyone else. <laughs> so... <laughs> The, you you know me for me, I guess. You would have seen all sides. Angry side. Not so happy side. Which isn't often. I hope. <laughs> And I don't, I don't really get angry. I get upset, but I don't get angry. It's weird how we all show things in different ways. And I can't hide how I really feel, so. I think um, the worst video I did <laughs> was with the second color, the second student challenge i think i i was having such a bad day and i just i'm sure you guys could pick up on it i know you guys can pick up on the video i mean i watched the video and i'm like oh how can anyone watch this i'm miserable in that video and then i had technical difficulties i couldn't upload the images properly and i was like oh it made it worse and i was like that was a very bad day and that's about the worst i get <laughs> You guys are gonna go back there now and go see, aren't you? But yeah, sometimes it's just like, <sighs> and then I do the video because I said I will, but I'm not in the mood to, and um, yeah, it happens. It's like you have to be, you have to get face to face with the way you're feeling, and get past it. Just get over it, and that's it. And let your friends see it. They're there as well. To support you. It's worth hiding how you really feel. I don't know why I went into that topic. See again. A day of lots of talking just makes me talk. I'm not thinking first. Not that I'm regretting what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, I am using dark red 225. Oh, that was right.
Maureen says we all have bad days. Yeah, I know. The only difference is you guys experience it with me sometimes. <laughs> Which I don't think is bad. Like, I am so comfortable with you guys. It's it's nice. Like, what we have um, is... We've got... We developed a really nice friendship in the last couple of months with the live streams and stuff. And it's something that's very important to me. Not so much the fact that I'm teaching you guys how to draw, but like the support base that we have with one another is pretty special and it's something worth looking after and the fact that i can be like that in front of you guys is um is also important to me because i know that i can have a bad day and it's going to be fine and you guys are going to be fine or you guys can have a bad day and we will be here That's what any sort of group should be like. A group shouldn't just be about the task at hand. This is not a business. This is a little community. So it should be about how, how you feel, um, how you're doing. It should be about those things as well. Because those are more important than what you are able to accomplish in your drawing. Because those things are reflected within that as well. So yes, I'll have bad days and I'll be live during those bad days and then they'll be gone. They'll be over. But also because of the nice little um, friendship we all have with one another, those days just don't happen a lot. This happened once. So that makes it even even nicer and just goes to show you how it, how it works on you. You know? Luella's asking, did I record the last video of the giraffe, the part with the neck? Yeah, I did the whole giraffe. Is there a miss, one missing? Your giraffe looks amazing, by the way. I love what you did with the background. It makes me want to go back to mine and add a background. It looks fantastic. Yep, Majin, exactly the same. exactly the same and I I can't lie either it's it's hard for me to lie it's like if you have a secret to tell me and you don't want anybody to know and someone's gonna ask me about it then just don't tell me but if it's something serious um, or important then obviously I will keep it to myself but all I'll say is just not something I can talk about doesn't happen often like you know when you have like family um a family friend or someone that says they they're struggling with something they don't want someone to know about it but they just want the extra support and those are things that i can easily keep to myself but surprise parties things like that don't tell me <laughs> please don't tell me about them just, just tell me on the day so that I'm surprised too because if someone asks me about it it's very hard for me to to hide it in my face I can lie with words but I can't lie with my body <laughs> okay Luella I'll check it out and see if I can find the neck one but I thought it was finished it totally looks finished to me when I look at it I'm using middle purple pink 125. So I'm just picking up colors without mentioning them. Luella, just make sure you don't overwork it. Because it looks amazing as it is. I, I don't know what else you need to do. And I thought you were finished with the neck. I know the neck isn't as long. But. Yeah, Barb, and you know, there's a few guys on here as well that are, are very, um, very great 
with us as well. And I think the support that we give them as well is very important to them. So some of them, you know, we have a few students on here that struggle with uh, disabilities or, you know, um, PTSD even. So the guys. So they, those are just, just being surrounded by people who care is enough. Like you don't have to tell people your problems, but you can just be in an environment that is loving and kind and that's all that's needed. And it's so nice, I love it when we get more male students because it's, they finally realizing, a lot of men don't do this, but they, a, a lot of men are starting to realize how creativity can really bring out something beautiful in you and that it's required because a lot of men they always work 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 you know and they support the family look after the family work 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 but they don't take their time for themselves and then they only realize that after they retire they're like 60 70 years old and then they're finally starting to calm down and realize how a little bit of art can just calm calm your heart <laughs> a little bit of art can calm your heart <laughs> i like that Okay, Lil, I'll, I'll find the next one. No worries. I don't think you're having any problems with depth. <laughs> I'm not sure why. From my perspective, I think it looks fine. I'm wondering if you're just being overcritical. I'm thinking that you are overcritical. But I might just need... I'll have another look for you if you want. So if you can send a nice close-up picture, maybe um, message me on Facebook. And then we can see what we can do about it. Okay, so we need to do some of these guys here. There's not much yellow in here, but I want to add yellow, so I'm going to just just make it pop. Make it pop. Thanks, Maureen. I'll I'll get the neck. I think it's supposed to be. Okay, yeah, I'll find it. I'll find it for you guys. Uh, I'll see. Maybe I can find it for you now. a lot of videos on YouTube.
Did I? I did the giraffe before the lion, I think. Oh, there we go. So the neck. Part six. Share link. Copy link. So, paste. Okay, so that's the link for the giraffe part six. Look at me. See if I can get part five as well. Are there any four parts on the the list? Shouldn't be. Part five is the chin. Okay, yeah. Cool. Like you didn't cause any problems. I want you to have all the materials. It's there. Cool. Um, I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I'm not thinking I'm too keen on this playlist. <laughs> I'm not gonna forget. Okay, so I want to add some yellow just to add a like a, a nice set of bit of brightness to this. where those highlights are and then pretty much replacing those highlights with some yellow oh, look at that it just makes it go hello <laughs>
then for the branch, I think I'm going to use some uh, Indian Red 192. And I just want to almost bring like a, a subtle highlight on the top of the branch. Uh, the, the bottom of the branch. So give it more texture. Jackie's asking, did I spray between pan pastels and colored pencils? Yes. <laughs> yep. So I seal in the pan pastels first before I put the details of the pencils. But I haven't used any pan pastels for the, the bird and the flowers. I've only been using my polychromos pencils. But everything else, I've used pan pastels first and then the details with the um, pencils later. I think I want to do a bit more on this flower. So I'm going to use some dark flesh, number 130. to add a bit more to these guys. They don't quite right. I'm not really following the reference, I'm just like roughly following the reference. <laughs> A 
which is more than okay. The more you do that, you just sort of get an idea, but you keep adding your own touches, the better, because then it's, it's really unique. Those colors, they just pop out. It's like, wow. I'm going to use some Scarlet Red 118. Indigo Blue, 157. Okay, let's move to the flowers over here. So I'm still using my indigo blue, I'm first going to sort of find all my shadows.
getting distracted. Okay, I'm gonna keep going for about 25 minutes until it's 12 o'clock and then um, I have a, a couple of emails and stuff to get through and then I'll carry on with this in my own time and then hopefully from tonight already I can start editing this because this, this needs to be finished today. But we're doing pretty good, I'm liking the flowers, it won't take long till we're done with the flowers and then I just have to do the detailing on the bird which won't take long either because I mean that was just a quick underpainting and we got that done real real fast so um, we should get it done pretty quick and make sure like even right now if you want to take advantage of the art chat and forum um, let us know what information you want or if you have any useful tips add them in there in the reference photo ones, if you know some good websites like morgfile.com or um, paint my photo or whatever with um, free reference, um, royalty free reference photos, put it in there. Uh, those sort of things, they're all great, great tools for us to use. Uh, magenta Luella, the Fisher 400, you don't need to blend because of this paper. Look at what I'm getting over here without blending. So why would you want to blend? Do you know what I mean? 
so the pigment sticks to your, sticks to the paper very nicely with your pencils and also um, you can still as you layer with your pencils you're getting a smooth enough result so I don't the whole point with blending with solvent is to get the texture to disappear and to have it look smooth and to bring the pigment out but since we already have a strong pigment and we don't need to get the texture any smoother there's no need for us to use solvents so I hope that that clarifies it a little bit so and with sanded paper so I I haven't used the Fisher 400 paper in a while I have been using the Canson Mitons touch and text paper and it is a sanded paper but it's a different kind of sanded paper so it seems to work differently so um, with that sanded paper I do blend with solvent because I, I don't get as smooth a result here with just layering with my pencils um, so that paper I do need to use a solvent or I, I like to use a solvent with that paper but with this one this paper feels different and reacts different with my pencils and I don't need to use a solvent so even though they're both sanded paper they're different kinds of sanded paper and therefore give a different result when you apply the colored pencils to the top so that's why paper can change everything paper can change your technique completely so using different papers means that you're going to be using different methods with your pencils um, depending on the paper so it's all about the paper will depend on the method that you use so you have to play around and feel it feel the paper and look at what it's telling you so look if you can get rid of the texture without using too many layers if you can't use solvent if you can get rid of the texture look and you can get a pigmented result without using solvent then there's no need to use solvent so you really have to have a play around with it like that I know it's so weird it's like this um, Luella saying that I do not think on this this sanded paper the pencils would fill I did not think in this sanded paper the pencils would fill in the texture I, it's weird like even though it's sanded it's almost like it's it's sanded in such a way that there isn't that many like texture pockets not as much as with the other sanded paper it's like the I don't know the grit is closer together does that make sense than other sanded paper where they're further apart so the texture is just too obvious and a lot harder to sort of fill in um, so yeah it's, it's it's weird it's so cool that it works this way But you you have to feel it for yourself it's it's something you have to play with and experiment with and feel because it's not sometimes you don't know it until you try it or you like oh okay I, I get it now because you you can feel the difference I love what Wendy did Wendy did a uh, used a whole bunch of different papers um, and did little circles so she used different types of papers with different kinds of pencils in strips so that she, you can she could compare what pencils have what effect on what kind of paper so I'm thinking I should probably do the same I might do the same um, just spend a day as a, a tips and tricks video oh and talking about tips and tricks oh, I'll say that in a minute but um, as a tips and tricks video I think I might just do the same as Wendy use different kinds of sanded paper and different kinds of pencils so that we can see what the difference is and then make notes on there as to which ones you would use solvent with and which ones you wouldn't use solvent with um margine and yes with this paper you would use the brush and pencil powder blender and this is the only paper that i would use that stuff because i, I don't like it on any other paper i haven't found like that, that i like it but in this paper we used it for the bird here and it was wonderful so I think maybe that is the way to go is that we test different kinds of papers and we um, we test the different pencils on those papers so that we have something to compare to and I think I have to do that soon I really have to do that soon so that I can bring that out whenever we have this discussion because it's something that comes up so much is when to use solvent and um, which papers blend in which way and the texture all those things it just comes up so much so i think that's going to be the best thing for me to do really soon is to make those swatch tests so that i can show you guys what i mean um and do it that way
That's right. So Mojin says, um, I use pan pastels. Sheldine, you use pan pastels for your underlayer on the girl and background. But you use brush and pencil powder blender to blend when you only use pencils. That's right. You don't need... Because the... Um, the pan pastels already have a soft blend. You don't need to use the powder blender on that. And then, and also I didn't feel like I needed the powder blender with the pencil details that I did on top of that. So I think what would have happened if I used an underpainting of pan pastels with the bird and I sealed that in and then I did a layer of pencils over the top and I wanted to blend that even smoother, then I would still use the brush and pencil powder blender even if I had a pan pastel underpainting. So um, it doesn't, I, I won't just use it because I just use pencils, but it did help. So it sort of gives you the pan pastel effect, but by just using pencils is it helps blend it out more. But you can still use it if you have pan pastels as an underpainting. But yes, if, if, you, if you don't have the pan pastels or you don't want to use the pan pastels because pan pastels, it's hard to use them in real small areas. You need to be drawing something big because the sponges are fairly big. They're not that tiny. So it's hard to get very small details. So that's why I use the pencils mainly. But if you still want the pencils to turn out to be as soft as the pan pastels, then you use a brush and pencil powder blender. But only on this paper. <laughs> so only on this paper. Alright, my SD card is full, so I'm going to have to stop for today. So Luella, yes, so we use the brush and pencil powder blender on this to blend. So Lu uh, Luella saying, um, awesome tips and tricks for the future. I just thought that with colored pencils, you had to use solvent or some method to blend. You have to, you have to use some method to blend. So, and it's up to you what method you want to use. You can use solvent to blend, or you can use the brush and pencil powder blender to blend, or you can use burnishing technique to blend. So those are three blending techniques. And with different papers, different papers might require you to use a different technique. With this paper, it required us to use a different technique. Well, two, you can pick between using the brush and powder blender, or you can just carry on layering and the texture will disappear with this paper. So you have, the paper is what's going to tell you what you can do with it. But I don't, you, I don't think I would use solvent on this because it's unnecessary. You don't need to. It's just an extra step, which, why would we do that if we can save time by not doing this? So no, that answers Sandy's question. I won't be using solvent on this because I don't need to. So look at these flowers that I just did. I haven't used any solvent there. I haven't used any powder blender. So I did use the powder blender to give it a go on the bird and it just, it helped me get all the, the yellow paper to disappear. So it just gave me nice coverage for an underpainting with a powder blender. But in essence, I could do this whole bird without any spirits, uh, without any solvent or any powder blender. I can do it the same because I know that because I can see that same result in my flowers in the flowers I didn't use any of those two things so and because I just did it I know that it will work this way so I can do the bird without having to use any of that so really it's uh, there's no set rule um, overall rule for all paper like paper makes you change things if you're using different papers you have to use different methods um, of blending so we definitely have to do a video about that definitely Okay guys, I need to go take all the videos off of my SD card to make space and then I'm going to go answer some emails real quick, um, have some lunch and then come back to this. So um, this is the last live that you guys will have of this but um, after the end of today I'll start working on editing this as soon as possible so that the edited tutorial version 
which will have the color on the screen, each color that I'm using at the time. Um, uh, all of that will be on there. I am going to try not to have this tutorial um, longer than two hours. So I'm going to try not to do that. If you do want the real time videos on there, um, from this webcam, not from the DSLR, I can upload them as well, just so that you have them. Um, so actually I'll do that. I'll do that for you guys. You guys can have the real time video clips and then, um, and the two hour condensed version and then Pan Pastel will just have the two hour condensed version. So I did record this. The only thing is with the real time recording that you guys are get, you guys are you're not going to get a close up. You're going to get a full view of the the palette and the drawing. You're not going to get any close ups. So that's the only difference. The only close ups will be this video from today and yesterday's one. Okay. Awesome. Alrighty, thanks for joining me today guys. I'll finish this off later today and you guys will obviously be the first to be updated on anything coming up next. And then tomorrow we'll be live doing the um, colored pencil magazine using a different method. So we're using the watercolor paper. Um, so we're doing the tennis shoes. So that's the March, the March challenge. I'm um, just going to do postcard size tennis shoes. I'm going to be using my Albert, my Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolor paper. I think it's 200 GSM um, or 90 pound paper. Um, and then I am going to use my Albrecht Dura Faber-Castell watercolor pencils as an underpainting. Seal it with fixative and then for the details of the shoes I am going to use my Polychromos and Prisma color pencils. Um, and solvent. So like we did the elderly eye and the male eye, we, we did an underpainting with watercolor pencils and then on top of that we did the details with the pencils. That's the method that we're going to use in tomorrow's tutorial. So we'll be using solvent to blend. We'll be using water to blend the watercolor pencils and then when we're done with the watercolor pencils we're going to seal that and then once you seal that you can use your oil and wax based pencils with solvent over the top of that. So it sounds weird that you can use watercolor pencils with your wax and oil based pencils but there's a way to do it. And that's the way to do it is you do use the watercolor as an underpainting, seal it off so that it's, it's done and then use your oil and wax based pencils. Okay, but I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow. Alright, 